In 2014, I published my first collection of poems titled in Tamil, Kuri Arutten, which means phallus I cut. I'm going to start my speech reading my poem. No transcendental yoga I performed. No transcendental yoga I performed to transform myself into a woman. I cut my phallus, soiled in blood, and transcending death, I became a woman. Oh, you do not have ovary, woman, you are not, said you. Well, behold, as you have severed your manhood, and you are now a desolate tree with decayed barks. You have dug the grave of your own lineage. Live you may till your roots last. The earth that bears you shall give up one day, as you have not planted your branches below, said you. Well, I do not want that ovary to carry your excretions of caste and religious fanaticism. And I do not want in my ovary the gestations of those seeds to grow into a tyrannous tree. Many a woman, as she carried the seeds of your discriminations, made her ovary your lavatory. Luckily, I am not a woman by birth, and that you deny to accept me as one is in fact the freedom I got. I do not recite the gyno grammar you, you have crafted. Call me an error in nature, and call me what you will. I know myself for sure who I am at any given hour. Renouncing the religion, casting away the caste, we transgender people are united as the rejected. Can you live this life we live? Can you become a woman without carrying a womb? Can you become a daughter without sucking your mother's breasts? I can. Cut the phallus of your chauvinism, and then you will know who you are. And then, only then, you tell me that I am not a woman. And the original poem goes like this. In Tamil, Kuri Arutten. Kuri Arutte, Kuridil Nanendu, Maranam Kadandu, Mangayane. Kuri Arutte, Kuridil Nanendu, Maranam Kadandu, Mangayane. Karuvarai Unakilai, Ni Pendelai, Entirkal. Nalad. Aunt Maya Arut Terindadal, Sandadik Samadikati, a Patupona, Watre, Maramni. Vidigal Ulavare Matume Bumi Unai Tangum, Injirgal, Nalad Ningal Kadikum Yachangalai, Sadi Berium, Mother Berium, Kondu Ningal, Britchamaka, Vidipota Ungal Michangalai Sisubaha Sumakira Karuvare, Yenaka Venda Ungal Yetrathal Bu Yachangalai, Sumandadal, Pavam, our Karuvare, Karivare Yanada Yenai Yerkayin, Pirai, into Dara Lamai Solikolingal. Nan yar in Bade nani arivin. Madam Marand Sadi Turand Maruka Patavarkal, Onjukudi Varum Varkay, Vara Mudyama Ungalar. Karavil Sumakamalaye, Thaya Ha Mudyama Ungalar. Mar Mutti Pasya Ramalaye, Magalaka Mudyama Ungalar. Yengalal Mudyam. Ungalin Anadika Kuriya Arutu Kolingal. Piragu Solingal. Nangal Pengal Ilayendra. And I dedicate this poem to the greatest leader, Periyar Ive Ramasami Avargal. Today, fanatic forces, particularly in Tamil Nadu, are trying to destroy the ideology of Periyar. The most important ideology of him was gender equality. That men, women, and all gender people should be treated equally. And this was 40 years ago. 
that man changed the fate of the non-binary people of this country with his ideology of equality, his way forward progressive thinking that is deep-rooted in all political parties of Tamil Nadu, whether there may be differences in the names of the parties, but the ideology is the same, and one of that is gender equality. And today, if transgender issues are spoken in this country and we are fighting for the rights of the community, it is because of that great man. And nobody can destroy his ideology, nobody can destroy his thoughts from that land. It is deep-rooted. And Tamil Nadu will always be a place of gender equality. And a pioneer in that, in transgender equality as well. I came to Kerala in 2009. I was invited by the Farooq College. I traveled to different places in Kerala as well as in different parts of the country as an activist to speak about transgender rights, gender equality, anti-discrimination, and the dignity for the community. In 2008, when I came to Kerala, I remember how the community, the society looked at us. All the transgender people of this beautiful land, they were all migrating to other states and other cities like Bangalore, Chennai, Delhi, Mumbai, a lot of places. Why? Because it was, it was not even possible for a transgender pe person to walk on the streets of Kerala. It was that narrow-minded and gender bias was that deep-rooted, narrow-minded views on transgenderism, upon that how we, how art, particularly films, have damaged, have miscommunicated, misinformed the public through their films, comedies, perverted, ideas about the community that led to the migration of a lot of people from out, outside Kerala and also violence against the community as well, rejection by the family and the parents as well. And I see that today many trans people in the 10 years of the past are an important period in the fight for equality for the transgender community. A lot of activist people, like Sheetal Sham, and a lot of people, we have changed this place with much, with a long history of struggle. We have changed this place so that we can live, we can exist in this place. But still, if you look at what is the condition of the trans people in this country, and particularly in Kerala, many of them are into begging and many of them are into sex work. And why so? Is it, a, is it by choice? Is it, by, is it because they wanted to earn money? Is it it's because they are lazy? Never. It is out and out because of the family rejection that they face. Patriarchy is deep-rooted, and gender equality is almost non-existent throughout India, and particularly also in Kerala. We have certain roles for women, we have certain roles for men, and we have no role for gender, transgender people. That is the condition. When someone is rejected by their families, they have nowhere to go. And still, if you are someone who is out of the ordinary or perceived to be abnormal or gender non-binary, gender non-conformative, then you are the target of social bullying, discrimination, rape, violence, hatred, and murder. And for lots of transgender people, 
in Kerala. This has been happening for many years. And even now, it continues in the name of violence. Everybody has an equal place to live in the society with dignity, to express themselves. To, to express themselves, their gender, their space in the society. Everybody has an equal space, even the transgender people. Of course, we have. And I'm sure that recently you might all have seen a video where a transgender person was completely <clears throat> how badly and shockingly treated by the mob, by the public, how her dress was pulled and how she was made nude and beaten up. That was one video. And on the other, how the police has been treating the transgender community with brutal, brutal violence. Yes, a transgender community today in Kerala are doing sex work. But why? Why aren't they doctors? Why aren't they writers? Why aren't they professors? Why aren't they studying in college? Why aren't they studying in schools? Why aren't they here in large numbers? And why are they begging and doing sex work? It's out and out because of the social exploitation that the community faces. Well, they are doing sex work. And if you look at who is their client, it is the public. It is the men out there who, are, who really wanted to have sex with them, who are paying lots of large amount of money to exploit them, to sleep with them, to have sex with them. And then these same society threatens them, beats them, is violent against them, and blames them as sex workers and lazy people. When the family rejection stops, our lives will change. We need to be accepted by our mothers and fathers. We need to be embraced and hugged by our siblings. We need to study in school like any normal child would do, like any other student would do. We need to be protected from discrimination, from bullying, from teasing, from violence, from sexual assault. We need to go to college. We need to have a degree. We need to be employed only then. We will have a space, a dignified space in the society. But you don't give that opportunity. The society, the family does not give that opportunity to a gender non-binary person. An, effem an effeminate boy in our society is sexually abused. In schools, is bullied because we don't teach gender equality at schools. We don't teach that women should be respected. We don't teach at schools. We don't teach about uh, transgender people at schools, in colleges, in universities, nowhere. And how do you expect the public to behave in a rational way, in a dignified way? Our education system is corrupt intellectually corrupt. And it denies the true knowledge. And one of the knowledge that is, has been denied is the existence of gender non-binary people, like the transgender people. Since ages, since ancient times, in our histories, in our great epics, in our sculptures and scriptures and everywhere, we see these stories, facts, that gender non-binary people existed in our country, in our society. And we go, we pray to gods who become goddesses and we pray goddesses who become gods But when it comes to the reality, we do not accept people. 
and we are hypocrites. The idea of equality cannot be between only between men and women. It has to be between, the equality has to be between all sexes. Trans men, trans women, men, cis men, cis women. Everybody has a space on this earth. Nature has created everybody equally. Only the human species is so narrow-minded with its own corrupt ideology. In, in every species, whether it's plants or animals or birds, we have gender diversity. We have umpteenth examples of gender diversity. Even in a small earthworm, an earthworm is a hermaphrodite. And it has both the male and the female organs. It can reproduce itself. And what does it have to do on Earth? It makes the lands fertile. Such a little creature created by nature, by evolution, it has its own purpose. And transgender people also have their own purpose to live in this oppressed, oppressed, discriminated, thrown away from the families, up on the streets begging and doing sex work, their priority becomes their livelihood. Not literature, not creativity, not art. So when you take up the literature of Kerala, or even in Tamil Nadu, or even in India, if you take up the literature, majority of the literature works, poems or everything has been coming from the general public, the cis community, we call it. Other people have talked a lot, write a lot about the transgender community. But what about the community itself speaking? In Tamil, we have four or five books written by the transgender community people. Living Smile Vidya's book, Revati's book, Priya Baba's book, and my poetry book. How many transgender people have written literature in Malayalam? How many have documented their lives by their own voice in Malayalam? None, nobody. Either it's translated or it is <clears throat> coming from other states in its original form in, as films and all that. We don't even have a voice in art and literature in this beautiful land. I mean, we speak a lot about gender equality, but where is the space for transgender people? Why aren't we given that opportunity to speak up? Speak up? Why aren't we having that platform to talk about our lives, our, our struggles? A lot of newspapers, a lot of magazines and television shows are about transgenders. I, appreci I appreciate it. I'm very happy about it. Because it has helped the transgender movement to move forward and to be progressive. Media has definitely helped. But it is time that we, as a gender minority, as an underprivileged community, as a voiceless community, we have our own voice, and literature changes this world. Pen is definitely mightier than the sword. It has changed history, and I feel that it is so important that the community has that opportunity to create literature. We need to have a forum to bring their talents to bring their voices, to bring their tears and laughter and joy and lust and love to the public through literature and art. That space is now non-existent. And that space definitely needs to be created.
When we talk about films, films have definitely damaged the transgender communities, people's lives for more than 40 years. It has a long history of destruction, deconstruction, destruction. Without knowing the history of the transgender people, their, their lifestyle, their struggles, their issues, their problems, their tears, their human side, a lot of filmmakers who are also considered genius and creatively, creatively superior, they also made the mistake of portraying transgender people in a wrong way. Misinformed. For money, you laugh at someone, you portray them as pervert, you portray them as clowns, you make people laugh, you plant a poisonous seed in the society about them, not allowing them to think, not portraying them as humans who have hunger and thirst and love the need for love and lust, who have people who have compassion and care for others. Nothing, nothing at all. You portray only one side of them and the wrong side. Whether, whether if we take out in Hindi films or Malayalam films or Tamil films, that is the case. I can point out 100 films, one by one, in Hindi and Tamil and each and every film star in this country has in some way, in some film, ridiculed the transgender community. And that has to stop. You cannot do this over and over again. Gender cannot be binary. It is diverse. It's beautiful and we need to accept it. And as a larger society, we need to understand that transgender people exist everywhere in this world, have always existed and will exist. Whether it was 2000 BC or AD, they have existed. Whether it's Africa or Ireland or Thailand or Mississippi or Sri Lanka or Australia, everywhere the community exists. And that is the beauty about it. And we have all rights, like anyone else, to live, to exist, to survive, and to change this world like anybody else, a better world. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. <clears throat> and. Um, if you do have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, we'll have the audience interaction, so if anybody would like to share your views or ask any questions, you're more than welcome. How were you able to change yourself? Change my, change my life? Or change, yeah, change your life.
Uh, it's just a follow on to that. Um, I think when you're different and you're also special, uh, it creates difficulties for people to step beyond that safe space to accept the difference that makes you unique. Whether you're transgender, uh, whether you're autistic, parents have a very hard time accepting yes. a child that is different. Uh, I'm sure the social network around your parents was challenging for yes. them. Yes. So how do you actually circumvent that problem? Because I think in society, parents find it very difficult to be brave. And so maybe you could elaborate a little bit more on where the social networks exist, where children are not as fortunate as you are, can actually be able to get the parents the kind of support they need, but also, you know, together, the family supports the child that is different and unique. Yeah. So a little bit about what the social structure, you know, that, that you yourself experienced, or what you envision could be, uh, you know, a, a better way of bringing around the support and the attitudinal change that uh, families require. Because okay. families struggle with this. Yes. Thank you for asking that question. I think the problem with our families is that they also grow, grew up, and our grandparents also grew up with this narrow-minded ideas of gender. Because they also didn't have the opportunity to sensitize themselves, to educate themselves, and to their parents also about gender, gender equality, and transgenders. And when I told my parents initially, especially my mom, that I am trans, definitely she was broken. She cried. She was shattered. I mean, for two, three days, she was shattered. It was actually not a surprise to her, because as a child, she has always seen me effeminate. And I have I've put my sister's dresses, and I have danced at home. But then she has seen that as kind of a playfulness from my side. But she has never seen it seriously coming from me. That is when the shock is. And that is when parents began to think, to panic. They panic, firstly, they panic about what will happen to the child's life if he becomes a she. That becomes the first problem. Because th then they think about what will my relatives think? What will my neighbors think? What will the society think? And how is this child going to live, going to exist when he becomes a she and she starts to live? What kind of a lifestyle did this child have? How do, as a parent, I face the neighbors, my relatives? When I go to a wedding, how do I face a lot of people who will ask about my son? A lot of questions are there with the mother. And for parents, it takes an enormous courage to answer all that or not to answer all that. It takes an enormous courage for them. I think my mother as a woman had that courage, I think. She did. She is a very simple person. Uh, the only, uh, I think the best thing about her is that she reads a lot. And she believes in gender equality. That is the reason, uh, even though I was a male child b by birth, she educated all, uh, all, the three, uh, all the two siblings of mine, along, all the three children of her. I have an elder sister, a younger sister, and myself. She educated all of us equally and treated all of us equally, too. And that comes from self-knowledge, firstly. And my mother, I've seen that she has faced enormous um, enormous struggles, particularly with my father. As a man, he was very macho, and he could never understand what I was going through. He passed away 15 years ago. Even I, before I completely started transitioning, he passed away. I'm not sure if he was, if he was alive, he would have actually allowed me to transition and live in the house. I have a doubt about that. Because he's such a male domi dominant guy, he is. But for my mother, I would say that um, she was different. And she has been the strength and the role model for people like me, the trans community. And my only advice is that uh, how do we, I mean, 
first to talk about how do we break those uh, those hard rocks that block children that blocks transparency from accepting their children love if you truly love your child you would never ever put that child throw that child out on the streets is pride so important than love is dignity of the family so important than compassion and care never and if a parent understands that they will truly accept and for a lot of transgender people also even though they are rejected by their families they take an enormous effort to prove to the parents that they are worth it we are pushed or obliged to do it that i am not a sex worker i am not a beggar when i i've seen our girls our my friends struggling to do that they call their parents and say i am fine no no i am not doing sex work no no i am not going for begging i am trying to work in an office i am i i live with my friends i am working in an office but they by the but the parents will never send them money or any kind of support it is just that they don't want their child to be beggar and sex worker but they will also not take their children back to the house such kind of hypocrisy lips and i know one of my friend's fa- mother and her family she is a sex worker in chennai she earns almost 30000 rupees per month 20000 she sends to her parents village in andhra every month she sends and after uh, doing her uh, silicone surgery and enhancing their beauty she started getting more money that is almost 50000 rupees per month in sex work and then she started to help her brothers and cousins in their education she started uh, saving money and began to send to her parents to build a house for themselves but she will not be invited to that house even if she is invited she has to come after dark and leave the house before dawn that was the case so such hypocritical parents also accept i think on the one way parents fear society social pressures social shaming that is the reason majority of parents actually reject the trans children gender non binary children the way to break this and make the parents and the families accept is through sensitization and particularly i believe that it is so difficult to sensitize our elders so i believe that we should sensitize our young people the young children of today the teenagers of today to respect women to respect transgender people to understand them and respect them equally and give them their own space to exist and to survive and to live that is the possibility but otherwise i don't see myself in how do we make all the transgender people on the streets go home to their parents i don't see that is possible what we can do is in another 5 years or 10 years we can stop children being rejected by their families and that is the kind of work we have to do teach make our art literature films speak about gender equality and it's okay to be transgender it's okay to be at home it's okay to be accepted by our parents it's okay to study in school and in college and get a degree it's okay to work in a corporate company it's okay to survive it's okay to love and get married that 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 is what will eventually change our our young children's life transgender or non gender binary kids lives from blocking them from being sex workers and beggars and giving them the life that they deserve thanks for asking that good afternoon good afternoon my question is like uh, apart from the family a social intervention is needed like as you said young children or young people need to respond positively towards the transgenders yes but uh, from the experience i had myself and from what my uh, friend shared with me especially when traveling towards north by train the transgenders have become a fear factor yes i uh, also when traveling through the streets of mumbai 
I have uh, had personal experience of like this transgender being a fear factor to me, uh, preventing me to from traveling on the same place again. But when I listen to uh, classes from Sheetal Ma'am and others, like I had, I had a positive attitude. But when it comes to practical situations, how do you think like we are supposed to handle such situations? Like when it is a fear factor, the equal treatment is actually denied to the transgenders. And even if you want, you are prevented from acting soon. So that's what I would like to. Thank you. Well, um, I know that fact that there are transgender people who in the trains, they come, they clap, they push you, they touch your body and then ask for money. And if you don't, they threaten you. Yes, they do. But don't, don't men show knives at you and then they take your money, they take your jewels. Don't they break your doors and then they, they loot up all jewels. Didn't greatest, richest men of this country loot away the country's wealth from the banks? And who is making this country corrupt? Are they transgender people? No, it is, it's, it's this public. It's the public money that is being looted. And about this fanaticism and about rape and about violence in this country, about religious and caste problems in this country, about environmental disaster and climate change in this country, about destroying our nature wealth, destroying our animals and birds and trees, who is doing it? It's our society. It's, it, is, it is men and women who are doing it. Transgender people do small crime, thefts, or threatens for their survival. It isn't a big issue at all. Today, we fear the public. The transgender people have humpteenth reasons to fear the public. Driven away by the family, driven away, discriminated by the society, beaten up, hated, beaten up, raped, subjects of violence, become nude, made nude and beaten up. How many examples do we have? And because it's a, because it's a minority community, a very small community, no vote bank at all, so nobody cares really. And of course, in every community, there are people who do this kind of thing, like threaten you for money, threaten you for their survival, or maybe greedy for their survival and existence, and also maybe greed, as I said. But don't they exist in every community, don't you think? In transgenders, too, they exist. I'm not saying all transgender people are good and pavum and innocent and all that. Yes, there are people in the transgender community also who behave in a certain way that is not appropriate for social behavior. But then when social society themselves don't acknowledge them, respect them, give them the space, where is the social responsibility coming from? Where is the dignity of the society? There's only rebuttal. So majority of the transgender people, some of them not behaving in a socially appropriate manner, either they address makeup, wig, or whatever, and the way they behave in public could also be a little bit antisocial. I think that is because of the fear. Why do tra people fear transgenders? And that gives us an opportunity to grab your money. Why are you fearing? <clears throat> Why don't you educate yourself? Why aren't you friendly with us? As a, as, a, as a woman, can you go and touch another male and then threaten him? Will, you give you, will he give you money? He will not. He will slap you. But why is he not slapping us? Because he fears. He's not informed. He's not knowledgeable. He's un he hasn't educated himself. Or his education on us has been denied. He never had that opportunity. That has to be created. When that is created, 
transgender people will not have, will not fear, there will not be a need to go to a train and beg. Today, transgender people are, as you said, begging in train and returning people. Some of them are getting money and filling up their lives with that, their basic needs and all that. It is because as long as the public fears, it will happen. Yeah, that's what I would say. Yes. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Um, so, uh, do you think that we should just give them that 10 rupees? Because uh, as a student, as a candidate, uh, I, ha I have traveled to Allahabad and uh, Patna a couple of times and I have experiences myself. And I have uh, no other way other than to think that this is really a fear factor for us. So, uh, do you necessarily think that we should give them the 10 rupees and just leave them alone? That is my first question. Uh, my second question, uh, you said that you went to uh, Faru College in Calicut. Uh, I believe that uh, there are two entries, especially for boys and girls. What is your opinion on that? There are two? Entrance. Oh, OK. I didn't know that. Anyway. <laughs> OK, uh, for, uh, coming about your first question, should you pay 10 rupees? Should, should you give 10 rupees? for the transgenders and trains? Well, it really depends on you. If you, are, if, you ha if you are generous, and if you have the money, please give. That is what I would say. <laughs> and uh, coming to this uh, two entrants, I've never heard such a, th such a thing. And it is a shame, definitely. If there is a separate entrance for women and men, it's definitely a shame. We need to build a society a unisexual society, a society, a space where men and women don't look at each other with lustful eyes, rather respect and understanding and acceptance equally. That is what we built. By dividing them, by making them not inclusive, we create the rift, the barrier, more and more and more. And this will ultimately result in either one of the sexes becoming superior and the other being oppressed. And mostly, definitely, it is the, it is the, it is the men who become superior and the women become inferior. This is an age-old idea and ideology, and I am truly against it. I'm very against it. And thank you for asking me those questions, which were very thought-provoking. Thank you, dear audience. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful session and also taking the time to patiently answer all the quest uh, questions. So as a token of our gratitude, uh, I would like to invite uh, Kruti Project Coordinator, Mr. Jobby John, to present a memento. Sir, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am.